This video is about good storytelling and the steps it takes to become a good storyteller. This presentation was designed by Patrick McGee for Our Lady of Good Counsel School in 2012. From the beginning of our recorded history, humans have been trying to explain their existence and share their experiences. Storytelling can be dated back to the cave paintings that might be theorized to tell of battles or great hunts. But the oral tradition of storytelling really hit its stride in ancient Greece and Roman culture with people like Homer and Aesop. Aesop was writing fables, and one of the most popular stories from ancient Greece, though, is Homer's The Odyssey, which has sold millions of copies, not even counting digital or ebook copies. But it actually started with this guy named Homer telling the story in different towns and villages. In fact, there are some people that believe that Homer was not actually one person, but rather the name of an occupation, so that there would be many Homers or storytellers traveling town to town telling the same story, the Odyssey. Eventually, somebody thought of writing down these stories, which is the only reason we have them in the format we do today. With the invention of the printing press by Gutenberg, storytellers started to lose their gigs, but not that they ever became extinct. There is something about listening to a story being told by a masterful artist. The audience was free to sit and imagine the world created by the author and storyteller. During great battles of the Middle Ages, the news and victories and defeats would be reported to royalty by the way of storytellers. Since kings and queens were sometimes nowhere near the battlegrounds, but they still wanted to give the impression to their buddies that they were heroes, they needed the details. They wanted to be able to tell the story themselves as if they were there in the battle, so they hired storytellers to go into these war zones and come back and tell the story and teach them how to tell it. Today, has become an art form. Listen to any radio show, and the broadcasters know that they must hold the audience's attention with their words, or they will turn the dial. Storytelling is much more imaginative than film or TV, simply because it requires both the storyteller and the audience to work together to bring the story to life. The storyteller must take the words written by the author and give inflection to them, voices to the characters, and moods to the settings. The audience must actively be listening to the storyteller as not to miss a vital detail that might help them enjoy the story fully. So why do we study storytelling in school? Well, for one, it helps us become better speakers. When we are asked to present an idea or facts or even just discuss the weather, we, as good storytellers, are able to be energetic and interesting. I mean, think about it. Nothing's worse than being at Thanksgiving dinner and getting stuck talking to your great aunt Imogene, who speaks so slow and so monotone that you fall asleep in your mashed potatoes. You would rather be talking to your great uncle Steve, hearing about the terrific adventures from his childhood sledding down an iced hill into oncoming traffic. He has energy and can tell you how to experience things. We study storytelling for a very reason too. We study it so we can become better listeners. When your classmates are telling a story, you have many opportunities to listen and be entertained while engaging your imagination and critical thinking skills. So what are the four steps of becoming a good storyteller? They are, find your good story, know your audience, rehearse it, memorize it, and warm up your voice, and finally, enjoy your story. So let's take each step one step at a time. Step one, picking a good story. Make sure that your story has all the story elements that we discussed in our last unit. 
Make sure that a good story has a plot that's exciting, leading to a great climax that will hold your audience's attention. Make sure the setting is vividly described with all the sensory detail. Remember, that's see, touch, hear, smell, and even taste. The more vivid your setting is, the more the audience can picture it. Make sure that you have vivid characters that are facing great conflicts, either externally or internally, and make sure that there's a lesson to be learned. Now, not all lessons have to be profound, like all men are created equal, but the audience does have to, have to walk away with something that they didn't know before. You also want to make sure that the story is short enough and, or long enough to show off your storytelling skills. A story that is too short does not show your talent and in fact will upset your audience. Because they were here to hear a story! So don't shortchange them. The same thing goes with a story that is too long. If your story is long, then your audience will get bored or uncomfortable, no matter how good of a storyteller you are. You too could get uncomfortable. If you have ever used your voice for a very long time, you know that you can get hoarse or even lose your voice altogether. So it does take a little skill to understand how long of a story should it be, and can it be too short? This comes with practice, and make sure you, that when you're rehearsing in front of people, you ask them if the length was appropriate. The other piece of finding a good story is the fact that you must connect to this story. Let's go back to those storytellers of the Middle Ages. They spoke passionately about battles and victory because to them, it literally meant life or death. Audience love to hear a storyteller get really into their story. So make sure you choose a story that you enjoy telling. If you are not moved emotionally by something in the story, be it the characters or the plot events or even the setting, then you will not be able to move the audience's emotion either. Make sure that you are able to tell people what you like about this story. The phrase, I don't know, I just do, is not an appropriate answer to the question, why do you like the story? It's too vague. It's not a good answer to the question. The more specific you can be, the more you know what you will enjoy about telling the story. If you like the way a characters are described or the change they go through, then it will be easy for you to get into that part of the story when you tell it. Step two, know your audience. Step two means that you need to put yourself in their shoes. You have to ask yourself a few questions in order to understand your audience. What is their common background? And would they want to hear a story about that history? What is their age range? You wouldn't read a nursery rhyme to a room full of doctors. And you wouldn't read Stephen Hawking's space into a room full of preschoolers. You have to make sure that your story's language is on the audience's level. The last question you need to ask yourself is, what do I have in common with the audience? This is incredibly important. As soon as you step in front of, of an audience, you have to feel just as connected to them as you do your story. Believe me, the audience wants you to do really well. If you don't, they lose out too and are forced to listen to a story that's being told very boringly. So they're rooting for you. Once you find the common ground between you and the audience, you can relax and move on to step three. Step three, rehearse, warm up, and memorize. Rehearsal is an intricate part of preparation. If you have ever seen a storyteller or an actor or a dancer make something look so easy and flawless, 
It's probably because they rehearsed for hours every day for months to get it to look like that. Without rehearsal, you won't have any comfort with the story, so you need to rehearse it. How much rehearsal? I would say at the beginning, reading the story out loud twice a day would be a good idea. The first time lets you remember the story, the words of the story. And then the second time lets you play with the words now that you're familiar with them. By play with the words, I mean add inflection, speak loudly or softly, highly or lowly. You get to play and add your own interpretation of what the words mean. This makes for good storytelling. Later on, when the story becomes memorized, you should start to venture out to tell the story to others. Parents, grandparents, neighborhood friends, younger siblings. But then, more importantly than that, don't run away after you finish. Ask them for feedback. What did they like about the story? And what do they think you could work on as a storyteller? The more you practice, the easier it will become, and the more you can add inflection to your voice and paint the picture with your words. The second part of step three is memorize. Memorization is tricky for some people, and it does take a lot of effort, but it can mean the difference between holding an audience's attention and hearing them snore throughout your story. There are a few tips that might help you memorize. Tip one, read it out loud. Out loud is key here. If we read in our head, we really are only using our eyes and our brain. And sometimes our brain likes to take shortcuts and jump over words or phrases. So we need to read it out loud. That way, your mouth, your voice, your ears, your eyes, and your brain are all engaged and your brain won't get away with any shortcuts. Tip two is write it out. Just as we want to engage as much of us in our story, try getting your body involved by writing the story out. Put the story away and try copying the story into a notebook. This helps your brain remember the sequence of events and words of the story. The final tip is to stand up when you read. We are a people who like to move, so don't sit down or lie down when you are rehearsing your story. You want to let your body be free to play with showing a character's posture, or maybe a character walks over to a door creepily. You don't want to hold your body back from doing those things naturally. If your body has something to do connected to the words of your story, your brain is more likely to remember those words. The final piece of step three comes on the day you are about to perform. Have you ever gone out for a long run without stretching or warming up your muscles? You probably made it halfway through your run and started to get really tired and really sore. The same thing is true about storytelling. Your muscle is your voice, so we need to let it get ready for its big show. You need to warm up, just like any athlete. So some warm-ups are tongue twisters. These help your mouth, your teeth, and your tongue get loosened up and ready for any tricky words in your story. The second one are some energy games. These games build up energy in you so that you aren't tired or falling asleep while telling your story. If you expect your audience to be energized and listening, you better be too. I promise, your energy is contagious. The final game would be focus games. Once you have your energy, these games are ways of helping your mind block out all the other stuff you need to do that day, like wash the dog, take a test in social studies, help cook dinner, and it helps you focus at the task at hand. What do I have to do today? I have to tell a story. I have to make the audience smile. I have to entertain. It takes all that energy that you created and puts it solely in your storytelling.
Step four, enjoy your story. The last step is to simply enjoy the story. On the day of your storytelling presentation, don't be nervous. Everyone there is cheering you on. They have come to hear a great story. So if you do make any mistakes, I guarantee they'll be very willing to forgive. Right before you go on stage, if you're feeling nervous, maybe play one last focus game to block out that nervous energy. And then when you get out there, just smile. Everyone loves a smiling storyteller. And remember your common ground with the audience. Breathe one last final calming breath and then just shine. Storytelling can be great fun. So as you move forward through these steps, I want you to ask any questions or raise any concerns you might have. If you need to email me, my email is patrick underscore mcgee 11 at yahoo.com or you can reach me through our wiki space at grade6mcgee.wikispaces.com. As always, enjoy your night and keep working hard.